Yeah, welcome back to the show. And of course, you've heard about that book, Accounting to the People. It's not just a book, it's a theme for the tour. And President Mohammed is currently in the Eastern region where he's been speaking to the people. And well, not long ago, he touted Ghana's economic resilience despite the global economic downturn. Speaking during his tour of the Eastern region, he attributed Ghana's feat to prudent economic management by his administration. Well, that will be part of our discussion tonight. And Kofi Adams is here. He's a national organizer of the NDC. Big man. So you, you organize this one, the tour? No, this is more of a, a government responsibility. Okay, so uh, it's not a so campaign. It's not, it's not a campaign. But he's campaigning alongside. Oh, you may want to say so that he's campaigning. But he's just telling the people the mandate that you gave me. These have been able to do to also check what is happening. So when does he start where, campaigning? Oh, the, the party will officially launch his campaign and will invite the media appropriately yeah. to come and cover it. Okay. And also yeah. with us in the studio is Nana Fredia Jemai Uforiata, who is the Eastern Regional Second Vice Chairman of the New Patriotic Party. Hello. <laughs> Nana, it's good to see you. Same Hope here. you're doing well. Good the president good. is in your region. He is. Yeah. And uh, he's been speaking to your, your people. He says that uh, we are actually, we, are, we, we have a resilient economy. Is this something you totally agree, have experienced, that the economy is very resilient? From his perspective, I'd, I can understand why uh, he'd think so. But for the rest of us, I don't think so. Why would his perspective be different from well, ours? We just had this report today about some $28,000 spent somewhere in South Africa and all those kinds of things. The Auditor General. He's, he's living large. So life is good. But come down to the ground and let's see what's going on. Kofi, resilient economy. Of course, the resilience of an economy is not determined by any particular individual wishes. So I am sure even if the street of Accra and Chebi and the rest is painted with gold, Nana will still say that the economy is not good because his party is not in power. But so we you have, think he's saying this because his party is not sure, in power? Sure, sure. It's very clear that we have standardized measure that we all use. Mm. We have institutions that are apartisan. They neither are NDC, MPP, CPP, or love Ghana more than any other country. That ranks country according to performance. And the president was not just speaking out of nothing. The president is speaking out of figures that are available for us. He cited examples of countries like South Africa that we all know it should be a big country. One has been downgraded. Two, they are suffering negative growth in recent years. Saudi Arabia has been downgraded. They have oil sometimes. They don't even need to go to deep seas like we do. It's flowing on the, on the ground just like that. They have been downgraded. They are increasing fuel and the rest. Nigeria, neighboring Nigeria, I'm told that for many, many days. People can be in queue for like 15 hours just looking for fuel and they are not getting. Ghana has a story where Fitch recently kept Ghana at the level that it was. Despite all these global challenges, Ghana has not been downgraded. We continue to post positive With a negative growth. outlook though. Oh, Fitch but it's, it's, not, it's not been downgraded. That is what is most important. Others did not even get the same grading. But with you an ignore outlook. the negative outlook. What I'm saying is that mm. others did not get the same grading with a negative outlook. They completely have been downgraded. Completely downgraded. But Ghana kept the same grading. All they are saying is that we need to do something. I think just yesterday, the World Bank has also come out with its report indicating that Ghana indeed is making strides and then from next year, as a result of positive decisions that have been taken over the years, growth will be fantastic. It's not only the World Bank that is speaking, the Economic Intelligence Unit, which actually predicted that the election may go to a runoff, said that whichever party won the 2016 election is going to preside over an economy that will be doing well. This is because right decisions have been taken today. So looking at the figures, looking at the outcome, the positive growth, the ratings, and all that, if you sit where he sits and you know that you are seeing all these information, of course, you will be able to say but that. But it's important to know that people are feeling it. You see? Are they? Uh, no, 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 no. The difference is that sometimes when you effect policies, like if you invested in your child, mm. 
and your child attends secondary school, qualifies, enters the university, and maybe is reading medicine, mm. is in the final year, that child may not have started earning any money. So the child may not be benefiting from the education. You may not be benefiting from the education. But you know very well that upon completion, this is the positive things that will be happening. So you have spent some money to raise that child to the level that you know the child is going to be doing something. It goes back to the point the, that the, President made a few weeks line. ago that he will put money or will have monies in our it, pocket it, in 2017. Well, before you can have money, mm -hmm. certain foundations have to be laid. Okay. And you cannot, you cannot just command money. It's not like magic that we are doing that you say you command and it appears. Mm -hmm. You have to work. You have to host this program and be here all the way to the time that you close in order to make something out of the process. The same applies with economy. You build it. People need water. People need good roads. For example, you come to work using, say, Kwame uh, Nkrumah uh, uh, Circle. Considering the traffic that you used to spend there, you will spend some minutes there and use some fuel beyond expectation. When President Mahama completes that project that he is doing, mm. you are going to spend less time, meaning that you will burn less fuel. Nanama, that money that you would have used in buying the fuel that you will spend in traffic because the road has not been properly engineered will be a saving in your pocket. Okay. It will also be a saving for the country and many other processes. If it is a hospital <laughs> that is built closer to you and that you have to board a car, for long distance before you go for healthcare. Today, you just walk. Okay. You are saving Let that money. Let me go money. to Nana so now. Money is still being kept in people's pocket because of development okay. projects. That Let me go to Nana money. now to, to comment on what you have just said. Then we can focus on the eastern region. Kofi has just given us their definition. This is uh, NDC Economics 101. <laughs> and therefore, his definition of resilient economy. That when you are able to cross from one section of the ring road to the other without traffic, you save fuel. That's a resilient economy. She asked that, about putting well, money that, in that the roads are, uh, Now you're jittering because when you were speaking, I was very quiet. Oh, no. Yeah, so don't worry. Because you are responding now, wrongly. That's your problem. Like I said, it's your definition of resilient. Now you're talking about, you want to dare to talk about fuel in this country. You keep increasing our rate, fuel prices. Today we can't pay less than 15, 000, uh, 15 CDs per gallon <laughs> in this economy. Where you've gotten oil, others didn't have it. You've been able to, you're not able to stabilize it. How long does it take to establish a foundation for the economy to grow on? You've been around for eight years. <laughs> what have you been doing all this time? That people should now wait till when to have money in their pockets. Is that even the kind of language you want to use if you're running an economy properly? The, 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 he talks about water. You just run a program. Look at the kind of things, the kind of things that are going on with our water. It doesn't even flow properly. There's technical issues that they're facing. They're not able to, to deal with our water situation properly. The, the potential uh, threats of water supply in the world, let alone Ghana, are so high. We don't even know what's going on because they're not concentrated on that. Their resilient economy is one of planting cement and concrete. They're building all kinds of structures. Why? I won't, build, I won't begrudge them. But is that evidence that we're growing? As far as I'm concerned, when you're talking about a resilient economy, you don't take over an economy where you go and change a dollar and get a do, uh, one CD, uh, 10 pesos or 20 pesos. And today you change a dollar and you don't even know whether you'll get your uh, 380 or 390 or four CDs. <laughs> We've weakened the economy. So you need more CDs to go and chase a dollar. We're still an import-based uh, economy. What are they doing about it? They talk about rice imports. Look at what's happened to our agriculture. <laughs> Devastated. Negative growth in agriculture. So what resilience are we talking about? When you go and borrow money to stabilize your, 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 your currency, that is called resilient? Let's call business people and ask them how they feel. Never in the history of Ghana have contractors threatened to go on strike. That's a resilient economy. What are we talking about? Let's be serious. The reality is that the, the monies that are supposed to be spent on building this economy are going into their pockets. They're not doing things the right way. How is it possible? And I was just listening to uh, the Honorable Kweku Kwating th this evening. 22% of the monies, they say, all these things that they claim to have built and all that, and for what they have built, we see. What they haven't built and yet say they have built, we'll talk about. The reality is that the money that is spent is 22% of what they've borrowed. 
So what's happened to the 78 percent? What money, what did they use that money for? And if 22 percent can do this, what couldn't have the 78 done for so that we will really and truly would have been an economy worth uh, boasting of? Hit the road. Today, I went to buy food. I like fufu. <laughs> This woman is when she said, you know, some people bite in rubber. The rubber bag fell in the soup. Now she said, hey, Mahama. She said, now you're just bad But luck. what has that got to do because with it? Because uh, things are not going well. <laughs> that's the reality. So there's something in treat. No, 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 If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I'm telling you, hit the streets. Go to rural areas. Come into the urban areas. Ask for the truth about what is going on in people's pockets. A resilient economy is one where people feel comfortable and can even predict their tomorrow. Today, they are still paying on yesterday. They don't even know how they're going to deal with tomorrow morning, let alone dream about six months' time. The only dream that I believe they have, and you know I'll say that, is when the, the, the elections come and pass. And yes, why? You don't think I'll stand here for my party? Of course. I'm not one of those who run away and say, uh, yes, I'm not talking about my party. Yes, because we have a better program to offer. Our leader who we propose to the Ghanaian people will offer a better management system for the country. There's no doubt about it. Nanef Kufuado will do much, much, much better than what's going on now with Mr. Mahama. So for me, you can say all the things you like. Go and ask people how much they are paying for their water bill. 70% and over. Ask them how much they're paying for electricity. You can't even be consistent about the supply of that. Now you're playing with terms. Doomsaw, uh, power, uh, power man, what is it? There come all kinds of, there are about three new terms in the thing to, sh to say that it's not doomsaw. When the lights go, you're doom <laughs> when it comes on, that's all. the reality is that you're not able to even manage that properly. And you're not able to tell us the truth about what the problems are. Because the truth, when it was told, you refused to hear. Dr. Baumia spoke about it. You weren't interested. Instead, you called him names. Today, look at where we stand. No, no, Hosre. That's what I'll tell you. The Ghanaian people are the ones who will tell us the truth. If this is what you call a resilient economy. Kofi. No, no. Uh, thank you very much. You see, like I said, you can have your set of information, but we deal with facts. First and foremost, if you want to talk about cost of water, you don't go asking one who has always had water running through his pipes about cost of water. You go and ask those who never had water and they have to spend so much to get water, what it is to have water running through your pipes. Maybe he has lived in a very comfortable area and doesn't know how much it costs. Or it costs for people in the areas like Adenta, how much it costs people in Teshi, Nungwa areas, and La areas who were carrying the Kufo gallons around and not getting water when they were in charge, and how much it cost them today. If you are able to do that, then you see that President Mahama has made very serious intervention in the area of water, to the point that even sea water is being treated and converted to fresh teshi. water, Teshi mm. desalination project, mm. being converted to fresh water to enable people depend on it. He talked about oil, that oil has been found. Long before Ghana found oil, Nigeria was dealing with oil. Today, go and see the situation in Nigeria. So the matter of finding oil is not a solution to an economic problem. It is the right investment. It is true that we are still an import-dependent country. And that is where I would have wished that, having talked, he would have told us that, when they had a chance, we took step A, B, C, D to block imports and then build our economy so that we can export. There's nothing to show. At least we have seen President Mahama take serious steps to deal with sugar through the revival of the Commander Sugar <laughs> Factory. But it's not, it's not working yet. It's not working yet, but yeah. at least he has started. Let me tell you, if that was started in the previous administration, before the NDC took over. Possibly today, we would have cut the importation of what? Sugar. So what it means is that tomorrow, when somebody comes after Mahama, he's not going to be importing that quantity of sugar that will be produced from Commander Sugar Factory. Indeed, if the Savlugu one also commence and comes on board, it means that you are going to increase the production of sugar in your country. 
that is saving money, creating jobs in this country. Okay, let me pick go on the, the things you said the, qu qu uh, you know, quickly before you, you move on. He talked about uh, 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 oil, the prices of oil, uh, the pe petrol right yeah, now. Yeah. And uh, I think a barrel is now $37. dollars mm, preposterous. Yeah, it's see? almost free. Nana, yes. Nana. You know what? Yeah. So it is if, not just if, about comparing our situation with that of it Nigeria. Is, if, it's, if it's about fuel prices mm -hmm. and government policy on fuel pricing, my brother and his party will not, should not even open their mouths and talk about it. Why? I can take you into a little history, not too far. 1999-2000, this was a political party that campaigned with a gallon of petrol. That it was too expensive. And they told Ghanaians that at that time, 6,300 per gallon of petrol was too expensive. And that the government then, under President Rollins, was criminal. That's why they were doing what they were doing. And that if voted, they will see to it that they reduce fuel prices. They took over the mandate of this country. One of the first actions that they took was to increase fuel from the 6,300 to 11,500. I can't then, remember what that is now. In, in, uh, if you want to, I think it was 63 pesos to now one CD. But uh, what was the price of a barrel CD, then? Do you remember? It doesn't matter. Of the course, price it does. Listen, you talk <laughs> Please, <laughs> now, be honest no, with yourself. No, no, no. no. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter the price <laughs> of the barrel because there was no massive change in the price of the, of the crude oil. Because listen, in 1999, <laughs> after the presentation uh -huh. of the budget, the crude oil was selling around $11 per barrel. Then it lifted up to almost $45 per barrel. That was when government adjusted the prices and they started demonstrating. By the time they took over the rents of this country in 2001, the fuel price had dropped even from the $45 per barrel to below $25 per barrel. But they still increased the price. Even though they campaigned and convinced petroleum product users that they were going to reduce it. So what they did in 2000 and deceived unsuspecting Ghanaians is the same formula that is being repeated today. Let's go after. The NDC has proven to be a party that will genuinely stand by its people. When it says what it, what it says in a campaign, it implements it was in power. In the year 2008, we encountered the same problem. The MPP was in power. They were selling fuel to users at a price that we thought was too high. We raised concerns. They said, no, they wouldn't do it. After the first round of voting, between the first round and second round, they reduced fuel price in order to get votes. The NDC won finally. And late President Mills, after taking over, further reduced the fuel price in commitment to his words that at that time, the selling price was too high. Compare that to what they did in 2001, when they campaigned on the fuel price, but when they came, what they did was to increase. Today, they are talking. If you ask them how they yeah, are going to They're not the only ones it. talking. The ordinary Ghanaian is talking. The that. ordinary Ghanaian who is monitoring listen, the oil listen, prices on listen, the global market, listen, realizing that listen, it's selling at $39.7 a barrel, you know, and we are paying outrageous you know, prices you know, here, you know, would also what? complain. It's you not just what? the NPP. You know what? Mm -hmm. Yam. When you go to uh, Bimbela Market <laughs> okay. to buy yams, mm -hmm. the price of a tuba of yam at certain times will be so low, so cheap. But it doesn't also mean that when you buy Koliko on the street of Accra in Adabraka, mm. it should be the same. I, because I, I don't quite get you. You will not get me, but let me tell you. Okay. A lot goes into getting the <laughs> final product that you pump into your, into your car. I believe we all know that. The, the, the insurance, the refinery, <laughs> the payment processes and all that. The okay. all that you are quoting, uh -huh. you are not quoting the price of fuel at pump. Find out how much those countries are selling at pump. That's, Compare that's Yam and Koliko. So yeah, you may not uh, get uh, the uh, same uh, price on the, on the market here because a few other things come into play. So it is not just enough to quote crude oil prices at this level. Ask yourself. But realistically, a lot of countries are enjoying that. But what because I'm saying is that prices. find out from those... If like we were comparing the pump... <sighs> the pump prices. Uh -huh. Say, take Togo. How much are they selling at pump? How much are we selling? Beni, how much are they selling? How much are we selling? Uh, Burkina, how much are they selling? How much are we selling? Mm. Nigeria, how much are they selling? How much are we selling? Cote d'Ivoire. Then we'll be doing that proper analysis. But to just take us off and then quote the crude oil price and not consider 
the levels of transportation for me is a problem. But moving on to deal with the issues that I was dealing before you asked me this one. <laughs> Talking about I thought you would the have forgotten by now. No, no, no. But more interestingly, he's just buying economy. time because he's afraid of the fireworks. Take the investment that this government is doing in just the cocoa industry alone. In the last year, farming season, government supported cocoa farmers with over 50 million hybrid cocoa seedlings. This year, government is supporting farmers who want to go into cocoa and young persons inclusive with 60 million hybrid free seedlings. It doesn't end there. Fertilizer, which they use, which used to be subsidized for them, is given to them for free, just like the other chemicals. What this means is that you are building a, a, a diversified, solid economy. You are not restricting yourself to just that oh, we have found oil. So because we have found oil, that will take care of all other things. Government is still investing in these areas. Like I mentioned earlier, the sugarcane industry, government is investing in that area. Reviving other otherwise non-functioning companies that existed in this country. The shoe factory that has been revived is creating employment, is adding to the market. The, the cement factory that has been established in the northern part of this country is adding to the economy. The infrastructure development is building a position to put us out there of a country that is growing. He talked about negative growth in agriculture. Mm -hmm. This government, in the year 2007, seven years after being in power, we recorded negative 1.7 growth in agri. This government, I am not happy even with the growth rate though, but this government will not record a negative growth. In agri? Indeed, in agri. Indeed, 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 the we first are not, two We are quarters. not experiencing a negative no, no, no. growth in agri? No, no, no. From, the first two where quarters, are you taking your listen, records from? The first two quarters mm -hmm. report was supposed to be 0. Uh, 0445. Mm -hmm. It's not negative. That has been reviewed now per the additions of the third and the fourth quarter uh, growth in agriculture. And that has lifted the growth, the percentage growth, to more than 3% for last year. For last year. So when people are even quoting that, oh, and agree grew by, yeah, agree not, grew by yeah, zero. I don't know what you're, yeah, I know, forever. I'm coming to you. It's gone on forever, I am, but nothing. I am, I am giving you the figures that exist. Okay. You are in the media sector. Yes. You can go check this. This information is available if you are interested. Go check, and the, when it is wrong. The information when, available is negative growth no, in no, 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 no. It's but you are giving us a different. I'm telling you, I'm giving you the quotation figure, tonight. The figure, the figure that was given was zero point zero four. Given by who? In the presentation of one, the budget, and also by the statistical service. But this zero point zero four five mm -hmm. was only for the first two quarters of 2015. Okay, let me go to that now. Nana. The third and the fourth quarter growth factors having been added has lifted agricultural growth rate in 2015 from the 0 0.045 that was reported to over 3%. Okay. So Nana, it wasn't even negative. Nana, please come in now. First of all, as you can see, and now the world, he's coming up with his own facts and defending them. That's his problem. We all had the, 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 the budget being read. We've had all the arguments that have come out over the, the, the few months since. We know what growth was like a few years ago. You register negative growth when everything is going positively, and then you go backwards. That's negative growth. Negative so if you, now, if you now check that out, you recognize that there's negative growth. That's one. <coughs> That's a reality. I've been doing quick research while he's been going, especially on the fuel matter. In, and by the way, I'm not one to be too bothered about our history because we're moving forward. Supposedly, you're supposed to come up with new ideas and grow the country in a totally new direction supposedly because you have a better agenda. Okay. So if you're failing, that's a major issue. And if you're relying on a record you call failed to defend your failure, <laughs> that's up to the Ghanaian people to decide. As far as we're concerned, you failed. The reality is that. Look, in July of 08, the NPP's uh, period, crude oil was the high, at its highest, $133.08. I was talking about 2001. And now you're telling me what to say. It's say amazing how you, your dictatorial tendencies, Kofi, cannot exert themselves on MPP people. Please, stick to your own agenda. Now, when you go through all that, yes, you look at the uh, changes that have come. Today, as we speak, like you said, the price has dropped to 30-something. 
you, the highest you've experienced was in April uh, 2011. And it was $123. Since then, it has dropped all the way down to 33. As for you, your price keeps going up. What is that? How do you figure that that one registers growth for Ghanaians? Now, you see, the political and economic reality of Ghana is this. When fuel prices go up, it affects everything and everybody. Transportation costs for the person who's coming to work at your studios, for the person who's transporting food, the person who drives the vehicle. Their costs go up. Everything. Now, when you're not matching it with the money that comes into their pocket, you tell me that, that that's resilience. When men are now having to sneak out of their houses because they can't uh, 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 show their... their yeah, it's become an embarrassment. And you tell me that because you're all right, so they're all all right. They're watching. You want to talk about water again? We just showed... Uh, the, we were just shown the, the situation of water in this country. And you're telling us what? You're doing nothing about it. And you cannot tell me that the comparison... There's been some expansion works you, in the water But sector. the reality is this, that it costs more now. That's a reality. And that's an issue. And if he, if he wants to tell me, and therefore the NDC and Mr. Mahama want to tell us, that it doesn't matter that we're paying more. What matters is that somebody else has water now. Already we have problems whether that somebody has water. But even when that somebody has water, the amount of money they have to pay, you think it doesn't matter. With the same small money that they make, that you are not able to, to grow. You are not able to grow the money. You that one, you don't think it matters. That's a serious problem. <laughs> I don't see how you can argue such a situation for, uh, for, uh, as a case. That because me, I've always had water, so I won't see that uh, the, there's development water. I've always had water. I'm running a restaurant. I need water to cook. Now, if I'm running a restaurant, I need water, and you've increased the price of water, what does that do to me? It makes my cost go up. If I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, depending on water for uh, uh, everything, whatever, business, and the price has gone up, you think it doesn't matter. That's a resilient economy, and people should, should, should jump and praise you. Ghanaians are watching. A whole host of other things are going. Electricity, I talked about electricity. But the biggest thing uh, is that going forward, they're going to be arguing about records. I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a fair, it's, it's, it's a fair deal. The reality, though, is that there's an 18-year-old who is registering soon to go and vote. You have deprived that 18-year-old of a good education. Possibly, they the didn't even get. Education. They didn't even get to uh, 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 go to secondary <laughs> uh, secondary school because of your failing. You came and told them that free SHS is a bad idea. Today, thousands of young people were not able to go to school because of that. Today, you can't even give them chalk. There was a school in the Eastern Region. When this chalk crisis came, yeah. thanks to the second lady's uh, harsh utterances, eh? <laughs> when we went to give chalk to some school, you know what we found out? Little children, five-year-olds, have to take 20 pesos to school in order for the teacher to buy chalk. Yeah. What kind of system is that? And you want us to jump and praise you because you've put up uh, big buildings. You Which is essential. No. Would, would you, is, that, is that more important than those thousands of students who didn't get to go to school? Because you needed to put up your big business. So it's a matter of priorities. And which one is more important? Mm. Which one is more? Getting somebody educated, eh? is it more important than putting up the building? It or goes is less hand in hand. Or is, no. Oh, how is, that? No. how is that? How is that? In the old days, in, you see, here's a reality people don't like to hear. And me, I like the truth. So even when it's bitter, I'm prepared to, to state it. Some people went to school under trees. Eventually, we got to Achimota School, we got to Van Spim School, we got to Adesado, we got to Wesley Girls, we got to Holy Child. If they didn't go to the, the schools under the trees, would they have thought about putting up those schools? So you, want so you develop the brain. Under three today. Who will now come and grow the system? Now wow. you put the brain aside and you've put up cement structures wow. because you are the ones who are the wow. contractors and you get the money in your pocket. Wow. That's what's happened. You've deprived a lot of young people of a chance to go to, uh, to school. Because one, you didn't grow the economy so that their, money, their, their parents can have some money to afford the, the, the education for them. And not only that, you, you didn't give them an opportunity uh, to do that. You looked at it, you said you could do it, and then it takes you four years. And they're even still constructing schools that they promised uh, three years ago. Okay. There are all kinds of realities on the ground that we're going to deal with. Ghanaians are very aware of what's going on. Um, the reality is that you need a certain understanding and experience. You need a certain vision, a visionary leader, somebody who appreciates who the Ghanaian is and where the Ghanaian must go. Isn't it a, a, a cop-out, a show of weakness, 
an example of not knowing where we should be heading when you are caught up trying to compare us to Nigeria and Saudi Arabia. Why? Mr. Kufour did not have oil. Mr. Rawlings didn't have oil. Uh, Mr. Uh, Achampong and uh, all, all the, the previous others. people. Yes. <laughs> you have oil. The, it is the money that we're talking about. What have you used it for? In addition to the other monies that we were getting before, you want to dare talk about cocoa? Never in the history of Ghana has a cocoa company uh, shut down because there's a lack of cocoa and therefore we had to import cocoa. How embarrassing. And they want us to do what? Okay. It is a very desperate situation they have put our economy in. Very desperate situation. That, you see, you spoke for a very long time, Kofi, so you have to have patience and listen. You have <laughs> you put are, us in a very are, desperate you are situation. Out and truth. That's, That's your that problem, you Kofi. That's you your, Kofi, that is your problem. It's the issue is that peddling. you have set us up in a, a circumstance that puts Ghanaians in a very dire situation. You yourself, Kofi, know it. <laughs> you were even worried about your own government. You yourself. <laughs> you have, in some time past, told the world that. Uh, 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 people have to appear on TV and radio programs in order to be made minister. That is the kind of governance we have been able to get. You yourself said it about your own NDC government. <laughs> so where do you now want to tell us? On what basis have you now changed your mind? Because the effects of that decision is what we are experiencing now. Now how do you now figure that we will be able to sort that out overnight? It's not going to happen. The reality is that the direction, so the thoughts, Everything that is going on has nothing to do with what is really uh, going on with the Ghanaian economy. Nothing. It's all showmanship. They said the president is not on a campaign. So why is he saying, so make me president again? Why is he saying that? Why is he going around saying, uh, in, 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 in my next term, I'd like, why is he using those words? It's because he's campaigning. The strategy is that they're using state funds to go around so that they won't, nobody will point out that they are campaigning with our money. Are you abusing That's what is going on. No, no. That's what they're doing. No, no, no. That's what they're doing. So they find no, no, no. it important and crucial to go around saying all these, uh, uh, this is their green book that no, they no, talk no. about. As you can see, I have a copy. One, one Do you minute. know that in the Eastern, oh, when he was talking, you gave him all the time. <laughs> no, no. The line, and, we, had a, we had a hitch. He's forgotten that. Yeah, there was yeah but there was all part of it. That we were, Do you know we that, were oh, that, that there was Doomsaw, thanks to you, as usual. So it's still an effect of you. Now, here's the That's another lie that is The issue is that, the issue. Let, Suddenly, you are sensitive about the from, things that you are doing. It's amazing. What's it's amazing. Like, what happened? The, the, the reality that is that here, you that are now going around telling people so things that you did not do. For, for the things okay. that you did. No, why should you be running on a generator? If the system was efficient, why would you be running on a generator? That generator requires fuel. Which, has, which, uh, which price has been increased today? An extra cost to you. Now, your bonuses are going to be slashed. And he thinks that we should keep quiet about it because it is generator. Why should they be using generator? Why should they be using a generator? And you think that should you should pound your you. chest about it? You cannot educate life, Kofi Adams because you do not appreciate what generator. Ghanaians are doing. Life you have no understanding around, about that. Okay. When you guys are hot, you then you start okay. talking okay. about okay. things you that know. you don't appreciate. If you don't the reality of the ground is that you don't right. know what is good for the Ghanaian. You only know what's good for yourselves. You're selfish. Then You're I'm grabbing let money and putting it in your pockets. And that's all you think about. Come to the Eastern region. Come and see that. And we'll talk about the Eastern region in a bit. The, the, the untruths are like that wait, brochure that they produce that embarrass wait, Ghana. Wait, okay, wait, wait, Kofi, quickly serious? so that you I see, can take some messages on social media. According to the MPP, that they are not interested in building schools for our kids, for their education. And that is, you talk and about that, telling lies. That, you are not telling that, the truth. Please, Nobody ever that, said that. that. You decided that. That, 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 that is so. what he never that, said that. that Nana like would never say that. That's why you what are you decided was that, that, that you would rather put up schools educated, before letting children that, go to school. Because people Meanwhile, were there are schools that children have been going, could have been going to while you would be you be constructing the the buildings. You could have done that. Alongside, you didn't because you are not interested in seeing the children educated. Let him make his point. He claimed that. The, because people were educated it and are trees. the most important thing. The that, most important yeah, thing is to grow the brain. We shouldn't grow the schools. brain. And that for children that's who find themselves educating themselves under trees, and considering the weather that we have, when it is raining, those children will come to his I father's I can show veranda. you pictures of a lot we'll of them to, that you we'll are able to, to do. Please, well, he's when he started, about these you said you had cleared schools. thousands please, of schools and up to please, date. You cannot even tell us what you have I will not stop because you were going on and on when I was talking. Instead of keeping quiet, he's saying that. You kept cutting. He's saying that. Okay, thank you, Nana. Let him. He's saying that. We should not build schools. No, you're not a victim. When you're talking, you quiet. He's not interested in building schools for kids who do not have roof over their heads.
Is that and what when it is rainy and those kids do not have buildings to have their education, said, he, then they will come to... I think to, you're uh, they will, him. They will, they will, I'm not him. I'm not misquoting him. He's saying he say that building the, the, those superstructures is not necessary. And that people were educated he under are, trees. Now, the schools that he says, should be worked on. He says on. People, people, are, people were educated under trees. And that's why they had a thought to build. So those Ghanaians who grow the have, brain. Who you are not have interested have in growing you brains. Grow you are interested in you growing grow the brain under trees. So that you can you okay. grow okay. the brain Let's under trees. Let's take some messages. But, no, no, no. But you can't do they this. Only, to they are the only people who are You will not invite me to the program and let me be unruly and think that you are taking messages. So that you get to do what you like. Go on and make your point. So I can take my messages. Thank you. They're not telling the truth, Kofi. Listen. You are interested in filling your pockets. Then, you, you let him him, then I will speak. Let because I will not be speaking. Make your point now. Make your point, point now. He's no, but quiet. when he doesn't also tell the truth, and I'm supposed to keep quiet because you're not I'll stopping give you me. I'll give you a chance to correct. No, no, but you, because the truths that he is making, the statements he's trying to attack are statements made on your show. I never about said what he said. About the construction. Well, yeah. that's why I told him that so, he, so, he, he misquoted him. But let him make his point. No, let him make his point. Kofi, please make your point. This government, will make sure that all Ghanaians have rights. And they have that right to education, which is enshrined in our constitution. Access to education is part of those rights. You will not say that because some have classrooms already. Ignore the rest who have been educated under trees. So the Mahama administration, the NDC administration, will deal with educational infrastructure. We will continue to develop it. Indeed, he talked about the uh, so-called flagship program of free SHS. Free SHS is nobody's, nobody's plan. It's a constitutional injunction that starting from basic, free compulsory universal basic education, secondary education in various forms should progressively be what? Free. You cannot start giving it free when others do not have access. That is why the government says that. Okay, Let's focus... That. So the other Pardon children should, should just fade away. Every year, uh, thousands Nana, of children come Nana, into the line. Make his you are point. saying because of that, those thousands should just wait. Let him make his hey, point. Kofi, please, how selfish can you be? You see, that is why President's evidence-based teaching was really <laughs> excellent. You know the young girl who is in the Atamel's community daycare school, sorry, the uh, community day school, mm -hmm. who last year did not get the chance to enter a secondary school because of lack of access. No school was available to accommodate her. Today, she had found a school in getting her education and having a dream of becoming a nurse. And she's actually the deputy school prefect, I'm told. This is what the Mahama administration is doing. He doesn't see the value. Thousands he doesn't other see such the children value. did not Please. get the opportunity. He doesn't see the value policy. of adding. He just went and he doesn't see the value of adding. What Talking about, about Coco, let me tell you that you must. a private company has its own policy of running. Ghana met its needs in terms of what? Coco. Those who have to import Coco, this is not the first time that they import their Coco beans. Ghana's Coco beans are of higher premium but the products that these companies produce is such that they can mix it with a lower premium cocoa to this high premium and still get the, the grade the grade that is needed. If you don't know, you do not no, no, know. No. Please CPC. let me let Export me educate. Also. Why you say that they C should use low grade cocoa? Is that you what you are saying? He doesn't. He's you, not listening. <laughs> he's not listening. Which private company? CPC is Ghanes, a state owned company. Ghanes, Ghanes, it's not state owned. Who, who owns it? It's not state who owned. Who owns it? CPC is listed on the stock exchange. Who, who has I'm saying that the state yeah, has shares in course, it. So the state has shares. That's mean that he owns it. There you go. The state has five percent shares. The state has five percent shares. That's enough. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Enough. Okay. We were making a point. He doesn't know. Don't come and state things that are not true. So, so you don't come and sit here and say that if a private company on its own, choose to import cocoa beans to support itself because it feels that I can get it for less somewhere. Nobody will stop it from doing so. Indeed, what is most important is the significant investment in the cocoa sector that this government is pursuing. Okay. The Mahama administration will be the last to say that all is glorious, that we are living in heavens. But he knows that there are challenges. He knows that he's confronting, whether it is water, whether it is road infrastructure, whether it is housing, 
whether it is, uh, uh, it is transportation sector, whether it's our airports, our seaports, you see massive improvement in all these areas. Concrete. Whether it is health, concrete. Okay. Of course, they will see the value of building. Let me hospitals. take some messages. They will now. call it concrete, concrete mixing. Uh, con <laughs> Let me take government. some messages now. Isa Ibrahim uh, says, "Why is the NPP talking as though we were living in heaven when they were in government? They should give us a break." Um, do, this one has a very interesting handle on Twitter. Dumahama on November 7th. Thank you. Says, NDC <laughs> is only interested in growing school children who use their heads to carry loot. Well, <laughs> joining that interesting discussion. Okay. Good evening to my national organizer. This is coming from Nuku Nufoga, who says that you're on the right path. Education debates will crumble uh, the NPP. Um, Rich MZ, uh, your message, your, your tweet is actually very uncharitable. I will not read that one on air. Issa Ibrahim comes back to say the NPP, the problem with the NPP is that they never appreciate anything. President Kofo was busy commissioning hippic toilets uh, when he was in government. Uh, for education, the NPP should not even go there. The NDC has done excellently well. Um, I don't want to hear anything uh, from Mr. Kofi Adams about education. They have wasted our time, and it's about time we kick them out. Um, a black foreigner says, Nana Apragadabra, He's, he has answered to all our problems. Uh, I really don't understand uh, your question. Um, Benjamin Yemo says, uh, Kofi Adams is trying hard to create a smoke screen, economic resilience by quibbling about the real state of the economy. And it's a question he's asking you. Fori Mensa says that you people sit in, Ac in Accra and you think that everything in this country is about Accra, Kumasi <laughs> and other places. Come to the rural areas and you. see what we go through. Very okay. Bad. I really like... Okay, Imano, thank you for your message. And... Um, there are more messages, but we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about investment in the eastern region because not, the president is almost an anecdote for us in the eastern region. Uh, president uh, Mahama uh, is in the eastern inshallah, region. Inshallah, next year this time. <laughs> that's Accounting what be to saying. the people tour, and if president you go through that Ecuador. green book, if you don't have a copy, it's online as well. Uh, the NDC has gone high tech. It's online. So get, a, uh, get onto your, your phones. The accounting to the people mm. book is not an NDC book, please. It's, it's for government. It's government. Okay. So <laughs> it's not an NDC. It makes the situation All right. worse. All right. Thank you, you for serious? the correction. We'll you be right back. You need the resources to publish this. is only as strong as its people. Healthcare infrastructure is a key component in ensuring this. We have dedicated ourselves to providing Ghanaians with access to this infrastructure because we understand that a healthy nation is a productive nation. Changing lives, transforming Ghana. Say a cast of frigid chili and when you the only machine be an emanate fresh high sense frigid air shed. I am Africa for and you current we a boom and all by check. Share ya yin yan cassa tabletop single door side by side double door. Nin you never will have it. Mousika Honton Piao doom so frigid that than a thing. Never. What's a high sense frigid? You have five years warranty. 
I want the only dada on the low. If it first April, cosy 18th, super hot discount. Poor high sense shop, yeah. Me say, catch your mouse, madam. High sense, me nam suma. Yeah, better suma. Who say who? I feel free. Zero three zero two five five zero 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 zero. High sense. Everyday prizes for everyday people. This is uh, former President J.J. Rawlings, and you're watching State of Affairs on GH1. Welcome back to the show. This is State of Affairs and we are discussing President Mahama's tour of the Eastern Region. He began today uh, and it's themed accounting uh, to the people. Kofi, I'll start with you. Um, investment in the Eastern Region. Yeah, sure. Are we seeing an increase? Sure, massive increase. Mm. The, 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 Eastern, the people of Eastern Region indeed are That's very That's why you're targeting the 50-50 for course, the next election. Or possibly even more, considering what it is that we 60, have 30. done. 60, that, 40, that, I mean. that, that we have done. I'm <laughs> sure I was in the Eastern region. I saw things for myself, and I know that we may, the 50 50 will be the least that we can be getting from the now Eastern you're region. I'm not boasting. Mm. Look, if it comes to water, <laughs> as they always say, it's life. There are a number of communities in the Eastern region that did not have crude water. Including even the MPP flag bearer's own home area. Chebi. Chebi. It's this government that have provided them with potable water. Good water to drink. Chebi. The town roads in the Achim areas are seeing massive facelifting. You go to Adesu, to Asamankesi, the Chebi town roads, the various, either they, they, are, they are finished or Construction is what? Going on. Or has just been also awarded. You go to the Buakwa uh, uh, State College, which is also in the Nana Kufuado's area. I'm using that because that's quite a point that I want to do my, my reference. Go and see the infrastructure development that has come to just those areas. Healthcare, provision of clinics, cheap compounds, across the region. Then, the mother of all, all other regions have public tertiary institutions such as the university. It was only Eastern region that is lagging behind. Thanks to NDC, Volta region had joined with the University for Health and Allied Sciences. Now, the bill, which was to prepare the necessary foundation for the establishment of that university has since been passed in Parliament, I think recently, that paved way for the, the establishment of a university for the people of what? Eastern region. And education, like he was saying earlier, that education is key. And education to the highest level is key. And this government has found it necessary to invest in all the sectors, the basic level, the secondary level, and the tertiary level. The fact that we've also upgraded the polytechnics to technical universities and the Koforidia Polytechnic is one of the polytechnics that based on the equipment they and all that, the they, they made the grading and okay. have therefore been upgraded to a technical university. So students who would be emerging from those universities will not now suffer the humiliation of when they want to do a degree course, they have to either be sent to level 100 to go and start all over again as if they have not had any tertiary education. These and many others are things that are on the ground to demonstrate that indeed the NDC government 
headed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, has done a lot of investment in the eastern region, and he needed to be there, one, to find out how far some of the projects have gone, those that have been completed to be commissioned, those that have not been completed. So he'll completed. be commissioning some projects there? Oh, sure, sure. As, as he moves around, there will be projects that he will, he will surely uh, commission. Look, when the Adomi Bridge was built, it never saw any repair works until this government came and realized that, no, there's a need to fix that bridge because it was almost... Collapsing. Why was it not done all that time? I don't know. Ask. Because, because your, your party was in power for very oh, of long Of course, the, our party was Before. in power. Listen, our party was uh -huh. in power, but the maintenance period didn't happen around the time we should have, we, okay. we were in power. We left power in the year 2001 2000. after we lost election and somebody took over for eight years, did not find the need to fix that break. I don't know whether he thought that. Oh, was if it necessary at it that wasn't time? Maybe he thought that it was, was it, it necessary it was at more that than necessary. In the that, eight years that they were in that, power, that, it was necessary that, then. That, if it could be done now, could have been done then, when there were serious cracks. Okay. And that is the major bridge that connects one region and part of Eastern to the capital city. The inconvenience that the short period of what? Repairing it cost the people. You can imagine if it was a total collapse. That had happened, and you have to now rebuild entirely a new bridge. How long it would take and the inconvenience that it would have, it would have caused. Today, out of many of such investment, the people of Afram Plains will also be having a pontoon that will continue to serve them. Okay. That will reduce the loss of lives from people using canoes and, mm. and, and boats only and the rest. Because we've there registered a number of accidents, accidents there. over there. Yeah. This government is investing indeed. Another area that is looking at is also the, uh, 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 what we call the water buses. The water buses are safer, much more secured than the conventional boats mm. that we know of. That is also being worked out to be introduced that will save the people of Afram Plains and other parts of that okay. region. There are many, if it comes to schools, uh, at basic level, secondary level, I cannot... Let me go and to Nana Fred If now. I start listing, a lot. We will not end the a show, lot. We will right? not end the show. <laughs> we will not end the show. Okay, Nana, you are from the region. Have you seen all of these? Nope. Chip compounds, you haven't seen any? Nope. The not Guapa State College? Not necessarily. Water in Chebi? You see, not necessarily because uh, I've gone looking for them and didn't find okay. them. So I, I, I won't use that as an argument. Okay. The issue is whether they exist... Is that water in Whether Chibi all of them now? exist. There's always been water. I guess Kofi Adams doesn't know the history of Chibi. When pipe the, bone water started flowing, he wasn't water. born. The dirty water. When pipe bone water started flowing in Chibi, Kofi Adams was not born. So he does not know the history of Chibi. The that, dirty water. that water processing plant that was put there was initiated by the Kufo government. In fact, it was a long standing project which was initiated. They came to benefit from the actual funding that came. They know that. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. And they think that it is something to talk about. Why? Boosting the standard of a oh. state college is a very good idea. <coughs> Who would say it's a bad idea? And that's what we would wish they had done to other schools so that more students would have had an education. Then you worry about building new schools and st instead of stalling people's lives. That's what I was arguing about earlier. And the point is that they do not see that we have wasted a lot of people's lives over the last four, eight years because we didn't want to spend money that we have spent on the Woyomers and all these other exp whatevers, instead of spending it on those young people. They'll be voting this year, and we will tell them the history. And they should come and ask Kofi Adams and Mr. Mahama why they didn't get the opportunity to go to SHS, because they ah. could have gone. So we will deal with that. Now, Mr. Mahama... So all those people didn't go to SHS? <laughs> government that is a, lot of, SHS. a lot of young people did not get the chance to go to SHS, as proposed by Nane Kufuado, shot down by the NDC in their <laughs> negative campaigns, <laughs> when the opportunity and money was there, from the period that we've talked about over the last four years, a lot of people graduate from GHS and can't go to SHS because they can't afford it. They can't have access to it. Meanwhile, there's money that could have supported them to go. And that's the point. Okay. You might be <laughs> yourself enough. And that reality is there. That chunk of uh, young people from that period will be told the history and they will know. Oh. You haven't now, seen any expansion in health facilities. <laughs> Health. Or but, the, but is health in, in a good situation in Ghana? 
I know, but is it the building that heals or is it the doctor? Or oh, we've forgotten what happened to doctors and how Kofi Adams and his people uh, were chasing the doctors and insulting them all over when they were raising their issues. About the conditions of Or we've service. forgotten. Have we well, forgotten that they are the nurses? Mm -hmm. eh? the, I, if, I wonder if Mr. Mahama would dare go to Nkoko and go to the nurses training school there. The nurses who they are making suffer now, those who are lingering because they cannot do anything because they've been bonded and the government isn't being, is not taking care of them. I wonder whether Mr. Mahama is going to face them in the eastern region. Those are the realities. When we talk about education, somehow we think that is about JHS and HHS and, SHS and primary school. It's about adult education too. Those nurses training teachers. I wonder whether Mr. Mahama will go to any of the training schools, uh, teacher training schools in, in the eastern region and go and talk to them about how he's doing very well for them. It will be very interesting to hear. By the way, Mr. Mahama is, is, is flying around the eastern region. He's not on the road all the time. You know that. He's not? No, he's not. He's flying around sometimes. Why? The roads aren't that good, so they can trickle oh, themselves along. The I can. How else would be, what else would be the reason? So I don't think that as far as the news that have been given today, For he didn't commission access, anything. Maybe. All he did was go to Derbez. That's why I'm telling you that he's on a campaign trail, spending state money and pretending that he's he's doing something uh, according to this uh, state-owned book. This book now, the Green Book now, the, uh, for the, uh, wait, which camera is looking at me? For the, st the world to know. Now they're saying that your money has paid for this book so that they can promote themselves. And yet paid. the brochure, the brochure this is, this that is, was promoting says, Ghana, is, they were able to, that one they weren't able what to do. What I said was that it's amazing. No, I didn't so say not I mean, funded by the state. It's, it's, so no, it is for, it is not for the party. Says, it I is said not it's not a party, party book, but it's exactly. funded by okay. the state. It's it government accounting for the what people. it has done. So the party had nothing to do with There's this. It's not a party. This what is not a party stable, book. What kind of, is, stable, is, honest, what kind of stable, honest government gives this kind of response? If you are working, you go and find private money to kind of tell the world and call it a state-owned book. What are we talking about? Who uh, if, it, if it is the case, who I'm published sure, it? Who sure are they? Let us know. Tell us. Ghana Tell us, then because and this Ghana has now. to go. And then <laughs> this has to go. I was going to for, ask you that before. question. Yes, and but I mean, because hear, there was Ghana then and Ghana now as well. But did you hear well. anybody say that it's private owned? But was it for the NPP? I'm saying, did you hear anybody say no, it's I private didn't, but owned? Was yeah, it for so the that's NPP? the big issue. I'm saying that if this is the case, then we're in trouble. Because you're prepared to publish this and make sure it's so detailed and glossy and nice. And then the state brochure that goes for our Independence Day celebration, not dealing with it. But let's talk about the Eastern region. Well, I'm saying, somebody are we talking fine. about the same educational system? I'm saying, therefore, he should go to the teacher training schools. He should go to the nurses training schools. He should go to those uh, primary schools and check whether we're still getting chalk. Chalk, oh, chalk. We can't get chalk, oh, chalk. Chalk should be paid for by the state. We can't. But he flew across the region. The money that he used to fly across the region will cover some chalk for us. He can't cover to that for To ascertain the for real issues on the ground. On the ground. Now he yeah. wants to talk about roads. Well, mention some roads, but I can tell you for a fact, no Chebi roads have been done. That's a matter of fact. All they come to do is uh, uh, gravel some, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, grade some mm. portion of the road, and that's it. So you haven't and seen what, road, road expansion as well? What does road expansion mean? It was a two-lane, now it's a three-lane or what? I want to know. <laughs> Because as for, the road, as for work, the road, because I understand there are some major roads I'm, being worked I'm on. I'm saying that, mm -hmm. if you hear me, I'm saying that what I've seen, mm -hmm. and I just came from Chebi over the weekend, what I've seen is that they've, uh, I don't know that they've graded the road. Mm -hmm. So it's wider, eh? and it's, Adam, but it's not tarred. It's smoother, they've, it's more trouble. They tarred it on one coat, and there are portals already. And this is well, what they will do. He, he keeps changing. He keeps no, no, changing. No, no, I haven't said that they haven't done it to the grade. But when you want, when you want, so when you want a road, continue confessing. He's talking about quality. When, when, you when you want a road, when you want a road, you know what a road looks like. That is not a road. Well done. You talked about asphalting and all that. Come and see for yourself, Nana. You have cameras. Come and prove Nana Fredia is a liar. I don't mind. Come. I was just on the road in Sawam, Saman Kesi Kadi, Akwetia. Go and check the roads there. You cannot go fast if you want to save your uh, vehicle from shut. I had to come back to the mechanics when I got back. The roads are terrible. Uh, Kade Otumi, go and check out. Br a bridge that collapsed. It took uh, the Honorable uh, Esther Obingdapa to fix a bridge because the government wouldn't fix it. Go and he's talking about Koko. Go and see what has happened in Ofuasi Ayibi. If you like, call Kojo Ponkrumah, he'll tell you. They themselves, eh? the, the roads there, President Kufo constructed those roads because it's a high cocoa producing area. Now you know what they've done. They've left the roads to rot. And then when it comes to cocoa spring, they select their cronies and go and spray their farms. Is that right? I am telling you. So go there and check. <laughs>
how is that? How is that even possible? That is that is what you mean? How is that possible? That they will fish out their cronies and then they leave the majority. You know what I've got from which one? Yes, I know what I've got from which one. You know how you'll identify one cocoa farm from the other? No. By saying, Nana, but is this your farm? I say yes. In Africa, is this your farm? You say yes. Okay, the favorite, Nanaba, you get. I'm not saying you are there. I'm saying, I'm using <laughs> I, know. Example. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. So that's about. how, uh, 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 it, it's not Nanaba. that difficult. So mm. if you know somebody and you Let know that me. this is their farm, this is what goes on. So is that what they are coming to promote? Is that what they're talking about? Today, all it was yes. was about Debers. Spoken are you talking about without, health? Without, it's amazing. Without, when I'm talking, without, suddenly the time without. is run out. Kofi is actually when, the timekeeper now. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's just no, 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 about keep, the truth. I keep the time what the well. reality is, what the reality is on the ground, mm -hmm. is that they are just out to do some. So they haven't invested at all in infrastructure in the eastern region. But I'm saying, is mm -hmm. it the kind of? Do you know that the roads, when Nananum and Neneme went round, they showered them with insults. <laughs> they are party executives in the eastern region showered the the, the, the the traditional rulers with insults when they came out to say that the roads aren't going well. That's what they did. Eventually, they came back and told us that they've uh, uh, given out to, uh, uh, they've given COCO funding to mm -hmm. it. We, uh, we don't even know what the, how the procurement went on that one. And, these, okay. and they are typical on the uh, single, single sourcing, uh, sole sourcing, sole sourcing thing. So you can imagine what has happened with that. Coffee. And so when you go, if you like, go to Kufodia and drive Nana, to drive Nanaba. to Bonsu, and you will see what the road is like. Okay. Nanaba. The roads are not Nanaba. working anywhere. The so of, tomorrow, the, the president of, of Nanaba is Mr. amazing that somehow when Mr. I talk, suddenly Akufuado. the time has run out. <laughs> it's amazing. Nanaba, you've been speaking for a while. Nanaba. How, where have while means what? Nanaba. Because of, oh, I should have time. Nanaba. No, it's we didn't have because, to. Yeah, Nanaba. because I'm speaking the record, and then suddenly it's his turn again. You have, you have and he talks and talks and talks and talks and talks about everything. It's yes. the, the, the record the real issues of there that Mr. Akufu Ado. I will come to you mm. pretty soon. Mm. The record of Mr. Akufu Ado. At least He's for the, the president time of we have given him uh, opportunity. He mentioned the name that an MP was able to what? Fix. The Honorable Esther. Uh, the power, the the power, power. Yeah. was able to fix something. Yeah, to your embarrassment. That, that, because that you are sitting here right. claiming things that are not. Unfortunately for us. We've had Mr. Akufuado who could not fix anything in and his And that's also not true, but I'm not interested in that because he's not no. president. And when Mr. he was MP, what he did, you Mr. are not interested. Mr. He's Mr. not like you, Mr. who cannot account for Mr. Muhammad's time at Bali. Mr. Akufuado himself you account for Mr. decided Muhammad's to time build a himself. library in honor of uh, J.B. Dankwa Memorial uh, uh, Library. A library is very important. Yes, yeah, very important. You know what happens? Now it is grass cutters that go there because you to have, go and play. You have refused grass to continue cutters. the project. How? How do you start a project? A project that you say you so are the, starting. Uh, the, the, that the, is Mr. Akufuado's record of performance. A library that he said he was because going to build Because you took over government, then you refused to continue. Yeah. <laughs> you, so he was why, you didn't take over government? Why was he using government so, money so, so, It's a state-funded project. Was he using government money to do it? Has it been corrected? Is it a pocket Have we been able to eradicate the grass cutters from there? Which grass cutters? But you're saying that it's been overtaken by... how he wanted it done. That's what he's farming for grass cutters. how he wanted it That is That is Akufuado's... The, 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 the experience of Akufuado's, no, no, the I professional Akufuado. You, you, you see that my time to him to say this thing. library. The reality of the Look, ground is okay. that the library I'm has actually, history oh, about the I'm truth. I'm actually time well, you know why me to speak about Mr. Akufuado? You don't want me to speak about Mr. Akufuado? Okay, it's actually time for me to take a break. My last break. Talk, 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 about... You don't want me to talk about Mr. Akufuado. I'm saying that that is his record. That he, it is grass cutters that go there. The number of things that Mr. Akufuado did in his consistency in his time. Mr. Akufuado was there You cannot as, match as, that oh, with Mr. Me, Muhammad's me, record okay. in Bali. Let's, let's take a break Mr. Now. Muhammad we'll was voted... Right. Welcome back. Nana, I'll give you one minute and then Kofi will have another minute and then we can go for beneficence countdown. So, I see. Yes. Nothing appreciative is being exposed by Mr. Mahama and his government in the Eastern region. Total failure is what they're exposing themselves to. He will not, by the time he leaves the Eastern region, have been able to prove that he has grown lives. It's not changing lives. The lives they, they themselves, their lives are changing. They are transforming their own lives. Changing lives on the ground in the rural areas. Roads are not being done as he claims. Uh, health is terrible. Education is worse. They're not taking care of anything that's worth <laughs> talking about. All those things are real. So for me, 
the Ghanaian, I'll ask you humbly to look at the technical reality of your life. Look at what you have to churn out every day just to survive. Look at what your future is supposed to look like, as opposed to what it is being made to look like now. And let's see how it goes. They're going to go around the country, spending their state money, like I said, uh, flying all over the place and thing, and seeing these things. The reality on the ground is what the Ghanaian can see. And we'll leave it to the Ghanaian to decide Coffee. come November. We're looking forward to seeing Nana Kufuado as president of this country, inshallah, and by the grace of God and uh, the all help right. of the Ghanaian. Coffee. This country has never made a mistake in choice of its leaders. They never made a mistake also in 2012, and they chose the right person. In the same way, they will not make a mistake. Like the Kofi Kumson said, that they can't sleep should Mr. Kufuado become president. Like many others have said, they are the Kennedys that he himself chose. Ghanaians will know the difference. They will see the person who is stable, who is correct in all situations that you find President Mama. You see yeah, someone, you please, please, when you, when you talk, when you were talking, I was quiet. When you were Muhammad. talking for Today the one minute, I was very, very <laughs> quiet. <laughs> I was very, please, very, please, very please quiet. Please make your point. You should let him keep quiet so I make my point. Let him have his one minute. You should let, let him, you should him have his one minute. Coffee, please go on. Coffee, please go on. Because I kept quiet. You can President Mama. Today you want to tell us what. He's seen as someone who has held this country together. They say, there's accounts have a saying mm -hmm. that ask yourself, what is the state of MPP today under Nanado? It's in total disarray. Yeah, but you're the same. If you we, looked, we at, if you looked at, if you look at our neighboring uh, friends in Nigeria, yesterday I was watching a news item mm -hmm. and the situation that the party that won elections found itself before election, they did not consider it serious, and today they are in a mess, all just fighting among themselves. And there are 15 hours of queues looking for fuel and not getting. Ghanaians will not make that. Okay. The hey, people in the colleges of education to good luck. know that the people, the people, the people, good luck. the people of colleges of education know that when they finish the colleges uh, of education. Job they will money, go into money. teaching. Okay. And which government is investing in building more schools that will give them a comfortable place to work? Nana says they can go and teach under trees. All right. Mahama says he will build schools for them. All right. Between Thank these two people, who will those in colleges of education choose? Let's go for a countdown now. The EIB Election Hub. Expect more. The term validation has come into an electoral lexicon. In Nigeria, the process of exhibiting the voters register, they had people to bring ID card to show the other person, they call it validation. In Kenya, exhibition and identifying yourself was called auditing. We call ours exhibition. Now, when to inspire confidence in some political groups or interest groups, how if you go on social media, they've listed in their view, validation should be that you should present certain forms of identity to show that you are the one. In that list, they've removed health insurance cards. Yes, they are right because health insurance cards have been outlawed by the Supreme, by a Supreme Court decision that you cannot use health insurance cards as a form of entitling you as a form of ID to register as a voter. So, in one breath, saying that you should use an ID to show that you are the one when the voters register is dated, it's maybe an backdoor attempt to try and disenfranchise those who had registered because the Supreme Court uh, decision did not take retrospective effect, it said henceforth. So maybe as a meeting ground, I think that the EC has decided, I'm sure those at IPAC meetings know 
than when the voters register is exhibited. One way of ensuring your identity is that they will ask you to put your, your thumb on the machine and your data will spring up. I think that is a better way of ensuring that persons, for example, who had registered earlier with the voter ID at that time, which wasn't an offense, will not be disenfranchised by showing that you must uh, come with an ID. Two, in some countries, voting is compulsory. Ghana is not among those countries. So if the voter register is exhibited and I don't appear to check, that should not lead to the removal of my name from the register. That's what those who are calling that there must be validity. You must go there to say, yes, I'm the one. It's not fair to the person who decides, I'm going to check. But if you don't go and check, the only advantage you have that come voting day, you go there, your name is not there. You may have a problem. So saying that you must validate your vote when it's exhibited, it's as if you are being forced to always go and say that I'm the one in the register. So that is, I think, is a compromise for those who think that people want to go and check. By saying validation that you must go with an ID, that means if you don't go, that means you're not in the register. I think they are pushing it too far. Yes, one of the concerns people have raised is whether uh, dead men, the removal of people who are dead. Yes, it is a concern. When you are not using biometric register, it can be a concern. Somebody can come, maybe in the, in the community where is, everybody knows everybody. If we know that maybe six people have in the past three, four years passed on, Somebody can come and say, I am this, I am that. They can go and falsify documents. But when there's biometric, it is quite difficult. Because the dead, there are no two fingerprints which are the same. So the dead man is dead, so goes his fingerprints. So that is kind of one of the difficulties. The other side of the coin, viewer, is that the new CR91 gives permission for, makes it possible for a registered voter to endorse up to five people that I know this person, I know that we do that, so the person can be registered. The danger there is that if somebody, a, 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 a vigilant police agent checks at the point of registration, and the person cannot, because when the voter's register is exhibited or before the point of registration, a police agent raises an objection. The person will not go to the system yet. After the registration, we we'll have what you call a district a dispute resolving committee, which will endorse. Now, you, the registered voter, if you know Mr. A is not qualified to register and you endorse the person one, you see the public officer, it's a criminal offense, and you go to jail. It's possible if you are convicted. So, my advice is that look, if somebody approaches you, gives you 10 Ghana, 20 Ghana, even 50 Ghana, that endorse somebody who you know is not a registered voter, be careful. When the law catches up with you, you are sentenced. Your family will be hungry. The person who gave you the 20 will be nowhere to be seen. And tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow, they are going to have a little bit of flashback to find out some of the reasons. Because it's part of our voter education. We need to, once in a while, go back to find out some of the reasons why the allegations that the voters, the elections were rigged, so that we can discuss it. Now that we are doing this count as is voter education analysis and let you understand. So see you tomorrow. The EIB Election Hub. Expect more. No, no, no. All right. Thank That's you very much for spending uh, your evening with us. Nana, for real Jimai, or for real ta. Thank you very much for passing uh, through really? the show. And Kofi Adams, national organizer of the NDC. You have a present for me. Yeah, I, I have to give you the, the Bible. It's very important. It contains <laughs> a lot.
pr that this government finance. has done within the short possible time. Own privately take finance. This is what they are using our money and time for. <laughs> There's more. Thank you very much, Kofi Adams. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.